have so many people in our audience. We are going to get our meeting started. Mr. McMichael, oh, attendance? Uh, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. McMichael. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did that last time. I uh, did. Madam, Mr. Presi Kushner. <laughs> Madam President, all board members are present at the meeting this evening. Thank you. Mr. McMichael is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have a number, a large number of very special presentations for many of our educators. And with that, we're going to turn to Dr. Dudley, who's going to lead us. Well, good evening. Tonight we have the pleasure of recognizing Collegewood Elementary School, who recently was named a 2017 National Blue Ribbon School, designating them as an exemplary high-performing school and one of the best in the nation. They are only one of 342 schools across the United States and one of only seven schools across Indiana to be selected for this prestigious award. This award is a culmination of all the incredible work the students, the staff, the parents in the community do de each and every day to inspire learning and cultivate a culture of success both in and out of the classroom. In November, Principal Kathy Olson and Assistant Principal Alyssa Carmichael traveled to Washington, D.C. to accept the honor and the award on behalf of Collegewood Elementary. And then they also had a um, convocation with all of the students to share in the success. Congratulations to Collegewood Elementary on such an outstanding achievement and we look forward to seeing them continue their pursuit of excellence for years to come. Mrs. Olson, can you come on up? All right. Thank you, Dr. Dudley, and thank you to the school board for having us this evening. Um, I am joined by a number of my outstanding staff members who are a huge part of why Collegewood was recognized as an exemplary school for 2017. Um, we owe everything to our staff, our students, our parent community, and just all stakeholders that are part of what we consider Carmel Clay Schools and the excellence that it brings. Um, it really is a blessing and we join a number of other uh, Carmel Clay Schools that are Blue Ribbon Schools, which is very prestigious. and. As I told many people, any one of our schools could be Blue Ribbon. And so um, I just want to thank my staff for being here tonight, thank the students and the parents who are a huge part of this. And um, it's a celebration that they encourage us to make sure it goes on for the whole year and many years to come. And so we will fly our flag very proudly and hang our banners proudly and um, hope that next year brings another Carmel Clay School that we can help mentor through this process as it is a long one and it is somewhat um, tedious when it comes to all the things and that you need to do, but it is well worth it because it is very exciting and well worth the Collegewood um, community to celebrate. So thanks for having us. And now I would like to invite Mrs. Andrea Yoakum, our department chair for world language. We have several awards in our world language department. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Yoakum and I'm the World Language Department Chair over at the high school. Um, tonight, as Amy said, we do have several awards. I can't think of a more awesome group to represent us as students and as teachers than the group that you're going to see tonight. So it's my honor to begin um, with these awards. I'd first like to introduce uh, Mrs. Kay Vasquez, if she'd come up. She's going to be introducing Paige Heil, one of our senior Spanish students. So I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Vasquez to give the introduction for Paige and her award this evening. Thank you. Okay, Paige was my student last year in Spanish 4. It has been so enjoyable and rewarding to see how she has grown in confidence and ability because of her experience last summer. She was especially shy in class at the beginning of last year and uncertain as to whether she would be away from home for seven weeks, but she was interested and I saw that. And with encouragement and support from friends and family, she made the decision to go. So uh, she at the beginning of, uh, so basically she went to Spain for seven weeks. And at the beginning of this school year, I saw her coming down the hallway with a glowing smile. I knew then that she had a wonderful experience in Spain. 
Then to top it all off, um, her professor there in Spain awarded her this award. It's the 2017 Indiana Outstanding High School Students of Spanish Award from IFLTA, which is the Indiana chapter of the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese. So, <laughs> seeing students like Paige realizing the value of learning about the world and themselves by studying abroad is why I do what I do. And Paige is an amazing and confident young woman, and it was an honor to have you in class. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. So come on up and we'll give you a look. Okay, can you stay up for just a second, please? Um, I do want to be sure and honor Mrs. Vasquez as well because Paige was able to choose one teacher as her most influential teacher. And so this is the second year in a, um, sorry, the second year in a row that Mrs. Vasquez has received this award as being chosen as the most influential teacher by the student who's chosen as our Indiana Spanish Student of the Year. So congratulations to Senora Vasquez as well. Um, I have a couple more awards to present this evening, so I'm going to invite Noura to come on up front. Tu peux venir avec moi? Merci, c'est gentil. Um, I'm inviting Nora to come on up front here. We have an art award to present, and I'm going to see if I can get the document camera to show our piece of art. Courtney, do you want to check? Okay. Um, do you want to come? So just a little bit of background about Noura. So I had her last year in French 4, and she's the most fabulous French student. You, uh, just unbelievable. Incroyable. Incroyable. And um, unbeknownst to me, she's also a fabulous artist. And so we were doing this project earlier in the year, and she had these unbelievable illustrations. And I said, guess what? There's an art contest that the state sponsors for world language teachers. Why don't you think about doing this? And so as you can see, this is her artwork. And the theme was languages open doors and so you were supposed to use that in the theme that was your theme and this is what she did and as you can see here's her self-portrait over to the side and she's looking in through the keyhole and the key is the different languages that are opening the doors and when she turned this into me in class I to myself thought this is so going to win the state award <laughs> but I didn't want to say anything to her because I thought well if it doesn't win she'd be disappointed whatever but I just I knew it was going to win and I was just floored to know that someone such a fabulous and kind person but also a wonderful artist and so humble and so helping of everyone else in class it has been my my absolute joy to have Nuha in class these past few years and I wish her the best at university but probably the coolest thing about this award there's also a $100 prize <laughs> so I would like to give you that <laughs> and then you've got your certificate as well and then we've got one more over here let's give her a round of applause Yay. And then I have one more student. She was unable to make it tonight, but Olivia Luo, who's also a fabulous artist, um, her goal is to be an illustrator. She's going to Ohio State University, and this was her honorable mention award. Again, language is open doors. So she was unable to be here this evening, but I did want to um, share that with you as well. So just some fabulous, fabulous students. And these are both senior students in AP French this year. So this one was Olivia's. And then we have one more award for this evening. If I could ask Mrs. Lisa Carroll to come up front, please. Um, the last award for us of the evening, we have one more award for the Indiana Foreign Language Teachers Association. I'd like to introduce Madame Carroll. This is Lisa Carroll, one of our French teachers at the high school. So I've had the pleasure of knowing Lisa ever since she was interviewed for her job at Carmel High School. I was not the department chair then. I was on the interview for the French portion. And so I remember leaving the interview and telling our department chair at the time, 
we have to hire this person, do whatever you need to do. And I'm so glad that we did. And it's been my absolute pleasure working with Lisa over the past, um, this year, her fifth year here at the high school. Um, the award that she's receiving is called the Rising Star Award. What this is, they give for each language, one person who has five or less years of teaching experience, someone that we know is going to be um, a wonderful asset to the profession, hence the name Rising Star. And so um, my colleagues and I were talking last year like we really want to, um, to put Lisa in for this award and she won the award and it was absolutely fabulous um, Lisa has been my right hand when it comes to sponsoring French Club which is no easy feat we go on a ton of different field trips there's a lot involved with that and she's always been there for me and then last year um, she was just absolutely instrumental in helping with what's called Le Congrès which is a French competition that we do every year with the students and several of her students won first place awards at this competition and she's just been so fabulous with that um, Lisa is an absolute absolute joy to work with. She is our technology queen in the building and she also works with technology throughout the department. But one of the best things about Lisa is her willingness to share with others. So every year I drag her into my classroom to give a presentation about Morocco where she did her study abroad when she was in college and just today we did that. It was just such a fabulous job. And so I'm just, I'm very honored tonight to give her this award. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time. Well, we'd like to congratulate all of our professional educators and students for these wonderful awards. And I would actually like to have our college wood teachers actually all come up so we can shake your hand and thank you personally. <laughs> thank you. Next on our agenda, we have our spotlight on excellence. Boy, that doesn't sound like you can hear it very well. Okay. Okay. Okay, next on our agenda, we have our spotlight on excellence. And as many of you know, we focus on some activity, something really amazing that we do in a school district. And so we use this opportunity to share it with the public and for the board to have a better idea, more knowledge about what's going on in our district. And tonight we are very pleased to have our SROs with us this evening and Sergeant Phil Hobson, who is going to be presenting. It's actually very difficult to get a group of officers to sit in the front where they <laughs> can't see what's behind them. It's getting drained into us. I, I would like to um, take this opportunity to thank the board for having us th this evening. I met with Roger McMichael and Dr. Dudley. Uh, Officer Van Adder had the idea to introduce our unit to the board. I, we've been with the corporation. The SRO program started with Carmel Police Department in 2001. So we are in our 17th 
year of the partnership with the school corporation, and it's been a while, and I know sometimes we have turnover, and I have the great honor of working with just an, an awesome team, and I, I want to thank the board, and then I want to thank the district, because we know um, contractually with Officer Moore and Officer Van Adder that you contribute to their salary, and, and that's a financial commitment from the school corporation, and then I also really want to recognize and thank my direct supervisor, Lieutenant Jim Semester, and then Dep Deputy Chief Jeff Horner, who is in, he oversees all of the support division, which is what we fall under. And the department makes a, a huge commitment as well, giving five full-time officers to the school corporation at the department's um, expense, which I think shows the commitment that our police department from the mayor, from Mayor Brainerd all the way down through our administration and the commitment we have to keeping our schools safe. And, and I think it's it's a very 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 great investment in our kids, and I want to so I want to thank the board and our admin. Um, what I'd like to do is I'll start. They always say you can tell experience by either the amount or color of hair. So as you can see, we have a very 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 experienced unit here. And uh, my name is Bill Hobson. I'm a sergeant. I worked with Carmel Police Department since 1994. And I started as a school resource officer in 2003. So I've been serving with the school since 03, and, and it's a wonderful assignment. I've learned a lot and grown a lot in that position. And I'm assigned at Carmel High School, and I talk a lot anyway, and I'll have a little bit more for you. So I'm gonna let the officers stand up and kind of introduce you with their experience as we go through this. Okay, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Okay. I'm Officer Scotty Moore. I'm at uh, Carmel High School. Been there since uh, 2014, I believe. Been a Carmel police officer since 1990, going into my 28th year. Six, six years in Indiana State Police prior to that. So I've got a little over 30 years in law enforcement. i got to say, other than being a canine handler, this is the second best job I've had on the police department. Thank you. I'm Officer Greg Dwald. I'm with the Carmel Police Department. I've been with them since uh, 2004. I spent seven years prior to that as a reserve officer. I'm at Clay Middle School, uh, starting my ninth year, um, ninth school year with, with Clay Middle School. So, and I really enjoy it. Good evening. I'm Sarah Livingston with the Carmel Police Department. I've been uh, on the police department now for 13 years. This is my first assignment as the SRO uh, for Creekside. So I'm fairly new, a couple of months in, but I'm loving it and uh, really excited to be working with you guys in the school. Thank you. I'm Officer Wendy Bodenhorn, and I've been with the school since 2009, and I started with Carmel PD in 2006. So I'm getting ready to start my 12th year with Carmel Police Department. And I'm at the Carmel. I'm at Carmel High School this year. First year there. Got to talk about myself. I only have 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Shane Van Adder. Uh, I'm also stationed at Carmel High School. I've been uh, working at Carmel High School as an SRO since 2008. Uh, I've been a police officer uh, since 2000, so I've got 18 total years at two different agencies. Uh, before that, uh, I was in the Marines, as a, was Officer Moore. He left that out of his bio, but both Marine Corps veterans. Uh, I'm on the SWAT team, and uh, I have three Carmel High School, Carmel Clay School graduates, and I'm just really proud of that, and they all did a great job and loved it. So. I'm uh, very vested in this and, and just love every day doing this job, so thank you. Good evening. My name is Matthew Broadnax. I'm the school resource officer at Carmel Middle School and the four elementaries that feed in there. Um, I'm finishing my 10th year with the Carmel Police Department. Uh, prior to that, I was a police officer with the Indianapolis Public Schools Police Department. Um, I enjoy my job tremendously, and I um, one of the things I tell parents and students is when they're when I have uh, their kids, they're like my kids, so I treat them accordingly. Sometimes I love on them, sometimes I yell at them, but I always hold them accountable, and I think the majority of our unit do that. And 
all of us enjoy what we do and understand the impact that we have on them. Thank you. So when, just to clarify for the board, and I promise I will move through this quickly and then if you have any questions for us, but the school resource officer program, and we're all certified through NASRO, which is the National Association of School Resource Officers, and we have what we call a triad concept in policing within the schools. And, and as you'll see, the base of what we do is law enforcement. Now, if we do the other components right, this is the least amount of our job. It's the lowest percentage of our job that we do is actually law enforcement. And that, that basically looks like, you know, we're, we're the police in the building. If, if we're a deterrent, we're there to work with as a liaison with other agencies and then just be a role model for kids and build that relationship between law enforcement and our students. The second component is the law-related education. We try to get into these classrooms and really educate our students on law-related material. And, and, the, uh, and, and that's the, probably the most important thing, I think, that we do because that's where our kids really get to know us and we educate them on decision-making and teachers build relationships with teachers in the classroom. And then lastly, another very, very important component is the counseling and mentor. So those are the three components to the triad, and, and that's just working with kids. We're not counselors, but on an informal and a mentor basis we are. We work very closely with social workers and administration to guide kids and, and allocate resources. And then I just went through, we have curriculum from kindergarten, and I'll, I'll fly through these with keeping our kids safe at school, our first grade cu curriculum, um, second grade. We're, we're really focusing with kids on decision making and, and drills, and we also work very hard with training on our staffs each year. Third grade, we, we again are working with the kids on their responsibilities with our Alice, our social media, which is a very big component of what we do now and, and how we communicate. The Alice again and cyberspace safety and then we start working as they get into fifth grade and a little bit older on, on working with choices as it relates to drugs and alcohol. Um, we do that at the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and you'll see some repeated things that are important to keep reinforcing with our kids. And in the eighth grade, we have a really good interactive curriculum on drug and alcohol and decision making. So those are the components of the educational process. I, again, just, I, I didn't want to take too much time, but I want to thank Dr. Dudley and Roger McMichael and Officer Van Adder for the idea to come here and be able to talk to you and let you know who we are and put a name with a face. We are all very accessible if any of you ever have questions and you want to call. It, it is a true partnership and I think to keep our kids safe we have to have our parents, our schools, and our, our public services all on the same page and I think in our corporation we invest heavily in that and I think we do an excellent job in that but it can't be possible without the support of the board the central office administration and obviously the administration at the police department to give us the opportunity to serve the kids with that passion that we have and then having this great group of officers I'm I just feel very fortunate we have a lot of diverse opinions a lot of diversity in our experiences in life and our law enforcement careers and we're able to use that to our advantage to have a what I think is an excellent unit. Um, we go to a conference every summer that the school corporation sends us to and it's all specific training related to our job and a lot of the curriculum that we have and the sign in and the safety training that we do for staff is, is most of the time brought back from that conference and that we get updated on school law all the way through special education issues that we deal with. So. Thank you very much for your time this evening. I know it went a little bit long, but if you have any questions, I know we'll want to come up and shake everyone's hand, but we're I, here I, if you have yes, any well, <laughs> we're, we're very excited to shake hands, uh, but I do know we have a few questions. So, Katie? Um, I have two thoughts. First of all, I, I love the fact that you guys um, have FaceTime with the students, that at a young age that, that you're not scary, and at an older age that they know that they can talk to you if they need to. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we do not, we value your presence so much. Today's the five year anniversary of Sandy Hook. We do not take what you do lightly. Thank you. And then I'm gonna start crying, so I'm just gonna stop. So thank you very much. And just to, to piggyback, um, one of the, as a parent, one of the things that I've noticed in the schools is that 
your presence is very welcome and you know what Katie was saying that the students feel very comfortable with you it makes it you know it warms my heart when I'm sitting at the high school selling tickets or what have you and students are sitting at a table with you you're in the lunchroom with the students and you've developed these relationships and rapport that they are very comfortable and feel that safety net so they can come to you when there are just issues that might pop up that they might not otherwise go to somebody else. So thank you so much for that. Pam. Yes, I have a couple of questions, thank you. Um, first of all, I noticed that your curriculum ends in eighth grade. So is there, uh, are there things that you do at the high school, like uh, do you go into high school classrooms to give talks on drugs and alcohol and uh, are you ever asked to like mentor a student at the high school who may be having issues um, drug related um, and what yeah what is your role in drug education at the high school and then my last question is uh, I know that there's this new law that just came about about child abuse and can you tell me what you what process you go through when you are reporting a child abuse case absolutely a couple of things I digress a little bit because the curriculum absolutely doesn't end in eighth grade but my PowerPoint ended at eighth grade I was trying to <laughs> but we we do get into the classroom and we do components on dating violence um, drug and alcohol awareness social media so an officer Bodenhorn as at the high school and that's one of her focuses getting into the classroom I know she just put out a communication to staff today informational on vaping and the effects of vaping and what types of things to look for she's working with uh, one of our narcotics officers to do some training with staff on recognition um, and so we absolutely do uh, we do education in the high school and we're trying to expand that it's a little bit more custom made to what teachers want in their uh, we've ha we have officers that go into physics classes and talk about accident reconstruction for example we've had lab techs go to photography classes and talk about crime scene investigation so we do do a lot of different things okay. in the high school uh, mentoring I would say for all of this that is a daily occurrence and and I can't think of a day where whether it's sitting at a lunch table or or someone coming into our office or a social worker wanting to talk to us about an issue they're dealing with so mentoring is absolutely a huge component component at all levels of what we do and then the child abuse reporting one thing that our district has become I think very efficient at and and we all know that from the school from the principals to the social workers to law enforcement we are all in this position and we the end user as we say is the child and we always want to look at ourselves and say what is best for that child within the context of my job the the new reporting law changed for school corporations it, it didn't change in the state statute in the state statute it basically said if someone believes that a child is in danger or has been the victim of a child abuse needs services that that person no matter who it is has an obligation to either notify law enforcement or Department of Child Services what we've done since we have officers right in our buildings is we have streamlined that to have our staff notify the law enforcement and then we notify DCS when certain criteria are met so the child report uh, reporting change this year came in the past a school official was was required to notify a building representative and the state changed that saying no if a teacher is held to that standard they need to make that immediate notification so what we did this year in our staff training which we do every year at the beginning is we went over child abuse reporting for liability for staff so they don't wait if they're worried about a child and clarified some of that um, so we trained all of our staff on that and that was the main change it's always been everyone has to report but it's changed with school officials so that was the change there did I cover all of this yes, thank you. yes. <laughs> other question yes Mike uh, I guess first of all I want to echo the thank you to all of you for what you do each and every day um, and to the Carmel Police Department I want to thank you for the relationship that we have with you and we value that and we appreciate it 
and I guess even all the way up to the mayor and city council. I mean, we are such a fortunate community that we all partner together um, to put students in our community first. And like you said, it's the parents and the other things. Um, and then I have the other comment I have, um, it's fun for me when I go to a football game on Friday night and I see the middle schoolers coming up to you guys and I see the high schoolers coming up to you guys and just to see that connection you know makes me proud of my community my, proud of my kids proud of you guys um, and then I do have a couple questions some of which I know the answer answers to but I think it and my fellow board members may or may not know them and I also just think it's important for those that might be watching this because it's taped um, and I find it hard to believe but people do click on it and watch watch what happens so um, I think it's important can you tell us um, I know that your group has been recognized by NASPRO is it NASRO, NASRO yes, um, and would you share that with with us in terms of the recognition we Carmel made, has received. Yeah, and I left that out, and the, the, the year is escaping me. We, we received a National Model Agency Award where they evaluated our unit and our community and our police department and the way that we work with the school corporation. And, and NASRO recognized the Carmel Police Department School Resource Unit as a model agency, and we, we proudly display that plaque. I think Deputy Chief Horner was my lieutenant at the time when we were when we received that award. So that was an award that we were felt ver it was very prestigious and we're very proud of that award and I apologize that I did leave that out. And then um, you already said for part of the summer you go to that conference. I think it's I find it interesting what you guys do the rest of the summer. It's not you don't go on vacation I know that part of you get part of the time you get to take your vacation, but I know if you could tell us what a typical summer is. We also, and Officer Van Adder is smiling at me because we had this discussion this morning. Uh, we do a teen police academy two weeks in the summer with the assistance of the school corporation, and I know. Um, Mr. McMichael, you always approve our use of your facility and the air conditioning in June for that time, and we appreciate that very much. But we have a free program where students in our community sign up that are interested in law enforcement or want to learn some about law enforcement, and we put them through a 40-hour, and, and we model it after a police academy. So we put them through some, the, the two Marines that you heard from earlier put them through some drill instruction and running, and we also do classroom and a lot of hands-on things dealing with law enforcement to educate them we do a tour up at the jail which we are certified in and use the transportation from the school again you know displaying that partnership that we have with the buses that we use and and those kids we've had a lot of great feedback um, that go into our explorer program which officer van adder and i, I who else is on that board with you? He runs our Explorer program. They help out at football games, basketball games, and and with Carmel Fest and different things. And the majority of our Explorers are graduates from our Teen Police Academy. And I would always we do a wonderful graduation at the end of the week with some community sponsorship. And we'll I'll extend an invitation if any of the board members would like to come and, and view the graduation. We have two weeks designated this summer. We do try to take some of our vacation time in. in during the summer because we like to be here when school's in session as much, much as possible. But we do two weeks of Teen Academy and then some department training on active shooter response and then, the, and then those Teen Academies, the national and state conference. And then there's also a Hamilton County training that the area SROs get together, together in a collaborative effort to talk about issues at all of the different school districts and make sure we have some consistency and maybe borrow or steal ideas from other agencies as they do f uh, from our agency. So we do stay very busy in the summer. Thank you. And then the, la the, l the last question I have is, you, you, got, you look very professional in your uniforms this evening, but is that what you wear when you're in the schools? Officer Moore and Officer Van Adder are, are in these uniforms. Officer Moore's short sleeves are usually a little shorter during the day. These are our winter uniforms. Uh, the school resource officers, we wear this uniform one day a week, and then we have a uniform which is a, bl a black polo with an embroidered badge, our name, and it says police across the back with a 
gun belt and khaki tactical pants. It's called a soft uniform. Um, so we're in this once a week and then in that uniform the other days. And there's some different philosophies on which uniforms you wear. One of the things that all of you said when we're in these uniforms building the relationships with kids, I think we're doing that great service not just with that officer but with all officers in law enforcement when they recognize that uniform as a symbol of friendship and, and assistance. Um, and then the same with, with our other uniforms that we wear. Um, I want to echo other board members here. I appreciate your presence at school that makes our kids and the school safe. And I also want to say that I'm especially happy to see we have a couple of female, um, we have uh, police women in the team, and they really serve as very positive role models for students, especially for girls. Thank you so much. That's one thing just to, to echo on that. I, I think we have a lot of diversity and experience and backgrounds and, and male, female, different racial diversity within our unit. I'm actually very proud of that, and I think it reflects very well on our kids to look at all of us that maybe have, whether it's just a respect for law enforcement or someone that may be interested in that career, to see you can be a young lady or an old bald guy and still have an opportunity in that, in that job. I pointed at myself, Officer Moore. <laughs> Well, thank you very, very much, and we would like to shake your hands. We would love to <laughs> shake hands. all you do. I'm coming in the back, so let my team be in here. I'll do I'll tell them to shush do you need me to put anything else up Courtney or you're good thank you very much oh, oh, oh thank you Okay, dokes. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Um, moving right along, seeing that we do not have any forms turned in for public participation. Um, is it for the hearing or is it on a topic? Okay. Um, typically, they need to be turned in five minutes before the meeting. May I see your paper, please? Court. Are your students Carmel Clay students? I'm not familiar with this address. Uh, yeah, that's an address in home place. Perfect. Okay. Um, you'll have three minutes to share your comments. Okay.
for the record, please state your name and address. You'll have three minutes to share your comments. Um, the lights on the podium will indicate when you have one minute left and when the red illuminates and the buzzer sounds, that will be the conclusion of your time. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Madam President. My name is Eric Morris. I'm at 1075 Arlington Court, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46280. As I just stated, that is actually a clay address and home place. Um, speaking about, it looks like the superintendent and the HR director are still not back. It's not really, it's not that important whether they are or not. But my understanding is they have not been on the job for two months approximately now. And they've, I also understand they continue to be paid. Uh, what that made me think is that maybe this is an opportunity for the board and the uh, administration to consider whether those jobs, those that, that head count, whether the particular two people come back or not, whether those are critical to the success of student and teacher performance. Have I've my children do not attend Carmel Clay schools, but I have neighbors, friends that do. I haven't heard anything in the last two months that the teachers have gotten worse, the students um, don't know what they're doing for the last two months, the bus drivers aren't driving as well, the uh, schools are less clean. So it's an opportunity because the first time I actually met the superintendent was when he was asking for, when he was doing his road show for the referendum, which I actually was opposed to. Partly because of this, because I was trying to ask him these questions. Have you really thought about what is the contingency? What happens? Where are their efficiencies? Is this really necessary for student performance? And he didn't really have an answer. You certainly won that. but. Here we have, we actually have data, right? We now have two months without these two high-ranking positions not on staff. I'm sure that the people that have filled the roles have had additional duties, but has it really, I guess, trickled down to negatively affect the ultimate goal, as the student resource uh, officer said, it's the end user, right? It's the student, correct? And that's the goal, is the education of the students. Are those two particular positions necessary uh, certainly a superintendent is necessary, an HR director is necessary, but I don't know how many people you have at, at the administrative level if you have 100. Do you really need, do you need, uh, can you get by on 98, whatever the percentage is? And certainly the salaries too, their salaries are certainly higher, more inflated than others. So I'm just asking you as you go through this, this um, process to consider that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have consent. May I get a motion on the table to approve consent? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Next, we have our public hearing. So at this time, I'll suspend the regular board meeting and open a separate public hearing to allow for public input regarding the proposed sale of general obligation bonds. On November 27th, Mr. McMichael presented the proposed sale of GEO bonds to be applied to the following projects and he asked the board to authorize the administration to advertise for the public hearing. Because of state law changes, <coughs> excuse me, a second hearing will also be held on January 8th at our organizational meeting. That is January 8th of 2018. Um, Mr. McMichael, would you like to make any comments regarding these plans before we invite members <coughs> of the public to share input? Yes, I would. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read a narrative that has uh, a, a number of pieces of information relative to the project. Um, and this information is required to uh, share at the public hearing. And, and it will be shared in a similar format, um, a similar information at the second public hearing. At that point, it will be put in the form of a resolution for the board to consider for adoption. So with that, um, I'll read this narrative. Uh, the project for which the board is considering issuing general obligation bonds consists of certain renovations and miscellaneous facility improvements at Carmel High School, including but not limited to paving, repair or replacement of finishes, partial replacement of the field house, roo field house roof related to renovation of the skylights roof structure, replacement of the field house floor and restoration of the E-wing roof. Certain, improve, certain renovations and miscellaneous facility improvements at Forestdale Elementary School, including but not limited to roof replacement, 
playground resurface and renovation and pavement repairs acquisition and installation of technology upgrades throughout the school corporation uh, facilities and all projects related to any of the foregoing projects the maximum principal amount uh, for this issue is eight million one hundred ninety five thousand dollars the maximum terms of the bonds is three years with the final payment being one fifteen of twenty one the estimated interest rate on the bonds 2.25 percent the estimated total interest cost for the bonds $383,427 if the board adopts a resolution making a preliminary determination following the second public hearing on January the 8th a notice of that would be published and property owners or registered voters would have 30 days following the publication to file a petition requesting the application of a petition remonstrance process for the proposed bond issue the school corporation's current debt service levy is twenty three million three hundred and eighteen thousand three hundred and forty seven dollars and the current debt service rate is point three two five two cents per one hundred dollars of assessed valuation the estimated increase if the bonds are issued to the debt service levy is five million two hundred and thirty thousand two hundred and eighty nine dollars and the tax rate is point oh six seven nine cents per one hundred dollars of assessed valuation however as existing obligations mature the anticipated net impact on the debt service tax rate is zero please then we also have information at the back of the room if uh, if any members of the audience would like to have it which shows the uh, estimated tax rates over the next 10 years and you, you would be able to see from that information that the tax rate actually is, is projected to decline um, <clears throat> the percent of the school corporation's current and projected debt service payments divided by the net assessed value of the taxable property within the school corporation is approximately 0.33 percent the percent of the school corporation's outstanding long-term debt coupled with the outstanding long-term debt of other taxing units located within the school corporation divided by the net assessed value is approximately 12 point eight one percent and with that information then it would be um, an opportunity for any public comment okay, then. at this time I'll offer members of the public an opportunity to make comments regarding these plans if there are no comments on the printer it's, it's on the printer Eric Morris again, 1075 Arlington Court, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46280. Um, it's a question, obviously, we don't really engage in a dialogue here, but it's a question you might want to ask yourself. So I'm looking at this form that I got at the back of the, um, from the printer, and it has the estimated debt service levy, assumed net assessed value, and it's projected out to 2028. You may want to, this is what I used to do is when I did financial analysis, is Go back to 2014, 2013, 2012, go back several years and see if you have similar forms like this and see how accurate those projections were and maybe compare to see if we're getting a good projection forward. Kind of use the past and see if the projection in 2014 for 2019 was, it looks like, approximately $21 million. So I, I don't have any further comments on that. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing that there are no further comments, we will close this hearing.
Next on our agenda this evening, we have action items, and our first action item is the 2018 school board meeting dates. I know we took a look at these and had a discussion at our last meeting and further um, explored some changes. The only big changes we have, the um, April 11th meeting is going to be a Wednesday. Um, Katie has a Parks Board meeting. Everybody is just getting back from NSBA, so that seemed like a, a, a good idea um, to give us some an opportunity to unpack what we've learned and have some time to um, prepare. We still have our three meetings, May, July, and December. We do not have workshops those those months because of the busyness and um, being summer. We do have our, our board retreat during the summer, our, our full day learning experience. Um, September 11th is also a Tuesday. We move that to um, rep you know be sure that we are recognizing that there are other holidays out there that we need to um, be sure we um, I guess understand and learn and grow and represent. So um, with that in mind, <clears throat> may I get a motion on the table to approve our excuse me, our calendar for the 2018 school board meeting dates. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda, we have the adoption of policy 8462, child abuse and ne neglect. To that we'll turn to Mrs. Nels. <laughs> yes, as discussed at the last meeting during our discussion time on this uh, policy, we found out that the Indiana statute has changed and it changed in July so we needed to update our policy to reflect the change and also it was um, noted when we had the SRO presentation what has changed in this policy regarding the law um, and so they are up, up to date on that as well so this is our new policy and we are recommending that you adopt it May I get a motion on the table to approve policy 8462, child abuse and neglect. So move. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, comments. Comment for you, Pam, or a thank you. I appreciate you bringing this up so the SROs had an opportunity to explain what <coughs> we currently do in the district and, and how their training with our staff has, has evolved as well. Thank you. So that was great. Um, any other comments? All those in favor of supporting changes to policy 8462 signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Next on the agenda, we turn to Mr. McMichael, donation of property to the city of Carmel for the right of ways in front of Carmel Middle School. Thank you. This uh, report and information was presented to the board uh, at the last meeting. Um, this has to do with uh, the city has requested additional right of way along the front of Carmel Middle School so that they can do a, a road improvement project. Um, we feel that this will be of uh, benefit to the school as well. It will make it easier for parents to that, that uh, bring their children to school and otherwise act, need to access the school. Uh, the property itself is, is fairly minimal. It's along the front of the road. It really will have no uh, negative impact to the use of the school. And so we would recommend your approval. Thank you, Roger. Make it a motion on the table to approve the donation of the property to the city of Carmel for the additional right-of-ways in front of Carmel Middle School. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Pam. Yes. Um, I think at the last meeting I asked um, the start and the end dates and you were going to check on that. Mm, I thought we sent that out to you. I don't remember what the it was. The end date? Um, I, thought it, I don't remember what it was. I thought it was... Um, no, I thought we did send information. Okay, did oh. send. I, I don't recall specifically. Whether it had the end date, I'm not sure. I'll check, and if it didn't, I'll certainly follow up and uh, okay. provide that to you. Um, and um, just checking, the street will remain open during construction? Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay, and so the hin it will not hinder any access to the school? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure we'll notice that something's going on out there, but they've the city does really well I think in terms of, of uh, planning for for the projects and and trying to minimize any disruption uh, there will be work going on they'll try to do m most of it I believe during non-student days but um, 
Um, so I, we're not overly concerned about that as far as disrupting the school. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much. Then may I? Um, all those in favor of supporting then the donation of the property to the city of Carmel for the additional right of ways at Carmel Middle School, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have our monthly report, our financial update from Roger. Thank you. Um, so you can see at the end of November, um, um, our um, cash balance is, is, continues to decline. That's, that's typical, and that's, we expect that. Um, the part that's really missing on our revenue side, our, our, as you know, our expenses are fairly even since most of our expenses are for salary and benefits. They're pretty regular every two weeks. But our revenue, uh, with, because we do have a local referendum, uh, we're receiving that when people pay their taxes. And so the, um, we, we're starting to get a little, little money in November, um, but most of the second payment, uh, the November payment, um, will come in December. And uh, so we anticipate uh, this is, we're really right on track with what we would have projected. Um, uh, uh, Lynn had suggested that we, we provide two years so that you can see, well, how did we look this time last year, which I thought was a very good suggestion. And so we will certainly commence doing that in December. But I will tell you that um, a year ago we were, we were about, uh, our cash balance was about $2 million more than it is now. But when we make the adjustments for uh, a year ago, however, uh, we had not, um, we did not have a teacher contract. And so, so we did not pay in, from August to, through December. We were not paying for the increased cost for teachers. Um, in fact, that was paid this year. And you'll recall we, we retroactively paid that, of course. And so, so that resulted in the balance being higher last year than it would have been had we uh, been able to settle that contract timely and, and pay it timely. And then the second thing is, is, is the, we, we, settled, we did settle the contract for this year um, and really very timely and, and uh, so now we're caught up and um, 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 so so you'll see that our, that our balance will go up um, by next month you'll see it go back up uh, with the increased revenue from the from the local property taxes and so um, but we're, we're uh, tracking very closely to what we would project what would have what we did project actually Thank you, Roger. I open up the floor to questions or discussions. Roger, I do have a, a question, and, and I'm not sure why it struck me this time and not other times because it's been on here for a while. The financial institution tax, you know, June, and it looks like we're going to be getting another payment sometime in December. What exactly is that? It's just a very, just what it says. It's a very minimal tax to, to uh, banks. Um, and I don't know much more about that because it's, you can see the amount of revenue is such that it's it's really insignificant. Um, but it but it's always shows up as uh, separate from uh, like regular property tax. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate you bringing forward the, the for next time mm -hmm. the two year the comparison that will be very helpful yes. as well. Thank you very much. You're Moving right along, we have um, any information, um, superintendent comments? So we we'll we'll do have a few things. Um, so first, I'd like to share that all 15 of our schools had the opportunity to participate in Hour of Code 2017 this past week. Um, and the Hour of Code takes place each year um, during Computer Science Education Week. And students had the opportunity to participate in a variety of coding activities to enhance their problem solving skills, logic, creativity, and confidence when it comes to learning 21st century skills um, and to make sure that they're college career and life ready. Um, and one of the things too, um, as we continue, there are new computer science standards for kindergarten through eighth grade and it's the um, object is to embed those, not to have a separate class, but truly to embed them into the curriculum. And so we'll bring more information to the board as well and maybe do some coding activities with you at a future workshop. And that would be very fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and another um, thing I'd like to share is that um, both Mr. McMichael and I had the pleasure of attending the 26th 
um, holiday spectacular, and I know many of you also had that opportunity um, to see the, our students at Carmel High School, our choir, um, to deliver such amazing performances. I mean, it truly was. Um, we had over 500 students participate, and um, you know, along with our staff at Carmel High School, also um, many, many parents from, and also community members that volunteered to help with the costumes, that helped with the, the whole production, and it was just quite um, an exciting evening to get everybody into the holiday mood. Um, and they did several shows throughout, starting on Wednesday night all the way through um, Sunday. So I know those um, kids are probably exhausted today, mm -hmm. but they did a fabulous job. And then we have one other thing that, <coughs> excuse me, Dr. Dudley and I look forward to attending the Hamilton County Leadership Academy this week, um, and uh, to be a guest on their, or to be on their guest panel along with other educational leaders, um, to discuss the successes and challenges of public education in Hamilton County and the state of Indiana. And that concludes our report. Thank you. That is great, and I, I, I echo what you have to share about how it is spectacular. I thought it was pretty amazing. I have two that I think are particularly amazing, <laughs> but <laughs> it was really an amazing show. They did a fantastic job. Um, we we'll have a couple board reports. We'll start with Mr. Kirshner. Thank you. Um, just for the, the legislative update, um, since our last meeting, actually this morning, uh, Amy Roger and I met with uh, Indiana Senator Sparts, who is uh, Luke Henley's replacement so she does her um, her constituency does include some of Carmel um, and so I think that was uh, a productive meeting just to really introduce ourselves to her and for her to introduce herself to us um, and we shared our legislative priorities and uh, we offered that if we could be of any service um, to her that we'd be happy to do so she does um, serve on the education committee so that will be helpful and um, I, I believe among other things she is a uh, accounting professor at Kelly at IUPUI um, and then on November 30th uh, the three of us also met with um, Brandon Herget of Senator Donnelly's office um, again to keep that relationship going um, again we shared our legislative priorities with him we offered to be of service to Senator Donnelly if um, so needed um, we kind of felt that this year um, there's not as much going on as the at the federal level as a year ago um, but we do have a relationship now what we did before our relationship with Senator Donnelly's education person is in DC um, and there is the availability to share information and request um, information um, and then he was at and I don't remember what he was at one of the blue the blue blue ribbon right. ceremony so um, again he's offered to uh, be involved in that we also did extend going back to Senator Sparts we did an extended invitation for her to participate in expedition um, starting with the one in January and uh, being clear to her that she's got the ability to come back next year once you're uh, on the expedition list you're able to come back you're always uh, welcome and encouraged to come back so um, I think that's it we do have uh, I'm not sure of the date but we do have a, another meeting scheduled with um, Senator Tor and um, Representative Shabit Shibley. So um, that's the, the next meeting we have, and um, uh, we'll be open to meeting with uh, others. Um, a number of us did attend the uh, Hamilton County First Legislative Breakfast, um, and while we were there, there was only one represent one elected state rep um, representative and um, he was invited to expedition um, but we are re-inviting him um, and I did share with him our legislative priorities which he received in advance but asked for an extra copy I'm sure he gets 
a million emails, so it's always good to be uh, fresh and center. Who was that? It was Ruckhaus. 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 Yep. So th that that meeting, for those of you that weren't there, was just the um, they went over what their legislative priorities are and shared some information from what their they did a survey of voters and what issues they thought were important so did anybody did either well, I guess it would be more spark did she have any information about the direction she thought some of the, the, the hot topics might go or that they're going to be bringing before um, bills or anything that affects the schools that we might need to I don't know, refresh ourselves about um, I mean I, I think it was more we didn't talk about any specific things that she s thought was coming I mean I, I think it was really our first chance to actually meet and greet um, and it's important I think that she is on the education um, committee um, and and we did share concerns that we've had um, I mean Amy talked about specific curricular curriculum things Roger talked about some particular finance things uh, but we kind of tried to keep it big picture and you know let her ask us questions um, and I think she's you know getting her feet wet um, it's you know a big a big uh, a big job and so Mike and Amy and Roger thank you very much for meeting with our representatives and our um, legislative leaders it's quite a priority with our board and we appreciate all the work and effort that you're putting in to make that happen I know Katie has a, a report she'd like to share as well go ahead Katie um, I always extend an invitation to Ben Johnson who's the director of extended school enrichment to kind of let me know what some exciting things are going on ESC um, as a put a pin in it maybe sometime a district um, spot on excellence or a workshop I think it'd be really neat to kind of see kind of what they're doing they're such a big part of the things that going on at school um, this year they've started um, a richer program um, richer r-i-c-h-e-r -E is respect integrity harmony excellence and responsibility that they're instilling those values in the kids and the little time that they have with them um, one example is at um, Smokey Row um, they are focusing on um, sorry just they're um, trying to show that kids are unique and that each one of them is important and so they're having star students and when, when they all get to be a star student but they get to make a poster about me and then as proudly displayed where they get to share their hobbies and their interests and their family and all that kind of thing so it is letting those kids have their kind of little moment of spotlight in after school programs so that they can share their interests and so I think that's really neat that they have um, exemplifying those principles um, each month so I think that's really neat and I love seeing the things that they're doing um, for um, our students after school thanks Katie any other legis not legislative updates any other board member reports we'd like to share I, I just I just have a comment that Katie reminded me I mean, one of the things that there were a number of things that I thought were interesting with our meeting with Senator Sparts um, and I we can talk about them when we talk about legislative prayers at another time but one of the things I thought was interesting is she was not aware of our before school and after school um, programs and that is a working parent that that even exists um, and while her kids are not wouldn't aren't in our district um, she had, uh, I don't remember how the conversation came up but it's it's and I think it's part of our it, it's hard to know what these legislators know and don't know um, and so that any time that when they come in that we can share with them things that they don't understand um, I think is important and the, the fact that for working parents we have both before and after and Roger also pointed out for our employees we have that as well so um, and I th and I think getting her into the schools will be helpful and we tried to invite her and stress um, that that was important 
thank you for pointing that out. And, and that make, you know, makes me think a little further. Have we had um, the before and after school program and sort of the educare component brought into Expedition? I'm trying to remember each of our topics in each month, and I, and I don't, it's not coming to mind that that is something that I, we've I highlighted. Don't, I don't mm -hmm. think we have. Because that's the, really a great asset, and I, I think that would be great to share mm -hmm. with the community as well. Well, the, the after-school program is is required by statute for school districts to provide. Carmel, along with, you know, some other districts, choose to provide a before-school program as well. And then, of course, our Educare program is a local program for our employees' uh, preschool children. Mm -hmm. That's uh, been in place for, for pushing 20 years, I think. it's, uh, And, of course, it's been very popular. We have over 200 children of employees that um, are in that program every day. Well, Maybe there's a way to include some of that information in mm -hmm. expedition because I think those are quite assets that we do offer the community and our mm -hmm. uh, our employees. And I do like the idea of having, and we'll explore the spotlight on excellence. Um, I don't think Ben Johnson's been here yeah. in a few years. Oh, he's yeah, been, they he's, been they've here been before. here, right? Yeah. But it's been a few years, so well, that I'm, would be I'm neat to bring forward. How many people don't know? I mean, you would think, parent, even parents. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, sometimes one of those things where you can tell people a hundred times, and then the hundred and one, like, oh, you oh, know. I get it. Yes, but um, I think yeah, it is. It's extremely great partnership, and mm -hmm. I know the Parks District is so proud and so honored that that there is that there, and so mm -hmm. they love being able to talk to us. And everything I know, and you it. brought up SRE, and I know Amy Baldorf does an amazing job there. Mm -hmm. Having been a previous SRE parent, it's kind of neat that there's that longevity with their employees, that they really have a relationship with the students and the school. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'd love to see that. So thank you for bringing that forward. Any other comments legislatively? Um, okay, that sounds fantastic. Well, I wish everybody a happy new year, happy holidays, and meeting is adjourned. <laughs>